happy day. I'm good at home. And today I'm ready for a little date. I even got my nails done for it. I've been out of the virtual dating game for a while because the girls from Doki Doki scarred me, but I'm ready to open my heart back up. This is your boyfriend. And I'm sure it's just gonna be the most wholesome, pure, gorgeous time. This game contains explicit images and some content that may be disturbing. Okay, well, you know, uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Gloom. You two have fun. Why does that seem so ominous? My life has been chaotic. My family broke out into another fit of drama, so I left the nest, ran straight to college, and got an apartment and a job. But lately, my job at a greasy spoon diner has been unbearable. My job doesn't pay the best, so that meant I had to find a roommate to afford an apartment. And now my roommate is always bringing some dropout into our apartment for late night study sessions. If you catch what I'm saying. My sleep schedule is wrecked and even better, the rent on the apartment is late. I had heard that if you become a roommate with a friend, you won't stay friends for long and oh my goodness, I cannot stand them. In my case, the friendship gets strained thinner as my friend keeps making excuses why they need me to cover their half of the rent. Thanks to that deadbeat, I'm working harder just to lose my money on the rent. I'm nearly broke and getting a second job feels like it'll kill me. At least in this park. <sighs> Namaste, I have alone time. Look how gorgeous she is. I've always loved this part of the park. It's untouched by obnoxious family members and college jerks, screaming kids, chads. The only people who come here are the groundkeepers. Even then, they only come by in the morning. Closing my eyes, I rub my face and huff out the tension from my lungs so that I could calm down and enjoy the peace and quiet. Just then, I feel someone sit down beside me. Ah! I turn and look towards the interloper. Ah! Oh, hey, take it easy. It's just me. Well, uh, who? The stranger says, trying to keep me from leaping too high off the park bench. You're a jumpy one, aren't you? Yeah, I am. He smiles and scoots himself closer to me, shyly and awkwardly. I mean, I do like a good shy guy. I keep my eyes on him, unsure of what his intentions are. His blinking eyes don't stray from mine, not once. So, are you waiting for a family member or a friend? Um, do I want to answer that question? It seems kind of odd for you to be sitting out here, all alone like this and so far away from the jogging track. Really? A chill runs down my spine. I cross my arm over my chest and slide myself away from him and closer to the edge of the bench. How often does a sane person walk up to you out of the blue and start asking such questions? Not often, for me at least. He picks up on my unease and refrains from sliding any closer. He crosses his fingers in between his legs and smiles warmly. I mean, he is kind of cute, isn't he? I mean, you don't look like the groundskeeper or anything. Um, I'm just getting some alone time to myself. Things have been pretty intense lately. He scoots himself even closer, his hand near touching mine as he smiled shyly. L look I know this is sudden, very sudden, but if you're free tonight, can I have the pleasure in taking you out to dinner? Oh my goodness, nobody's been interested in me for so long. Can I have the pleasure? Never mind, he was the weird one. I can't tell if he's a bit awkward or just eccentric. What? Why? Why did he have such an interest in me? Well, I'm your boyfriend. Isn't that why you're here? You were literally just asking why I'm here. What? My boyfriend? Why would he be assuming we're in a relationship? There's an awkward silence as the stranger sits patiently waiting for my answer. Um, uh, I mean, dinner does sound kind of, I mean, I'm lonely. Um, I guess. It's not like I'm doing anything anyways, and it would be a nice break from the monotony. Wait, I just said yes to somebody who's assuming he's my boyfriend out of nowhere. But God knows I could stand and forget my problems for a few hours, and this guy seems interesting enough to keep my mind off of things. Plus, it's a public place, right? Really? That's great. He beams, taking hold of my hand into his own. Oh, um, okay. He'll see me tonight at seven. He was about to stand up from the bench, but pauses abruptly when he realizes that he was forgetting something. Hey, he thinks that we need a place to meet up. The old diner downtown. It's nice and quiet, so no one will disturb us. I mean, I'd prefer like a McDonald's, something more frequented by people. It's not very often you accept a date with someone who thinks you're their girlfriend. The diner downtown? Which one? You know, the one you work at. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Great. See you tonight. And just like that, he hurries off with a leap in every step, looking as though he had just won the lottery. I sit for a while, replaying the strange encounter in my head a few times. I suppose I should be flattered he took such an interest in me. I can't tell if meeting someone like that is normal or not. The bird stops singing and I feel a knot grow in the pit of my stomach. How did he know where I work? I didn't even think about that! Dad's dang diner, all right, here we go. 7 p.m. I show up at the diner feeling rather unusual meeting someone at the place that I work at for a completely spontaneous dinner date, but 
The management knows me, maybe they'll keep me safe. I take a seat at the booth towards the back. The diner isn't very busy tonight, which is less unusual than most people would assume. Even though I work here, this isn't where I would have chose to eat at, but maybe he was another customer that I had never paid attention to? Maybe that's why he knows me, because he eats here and he sees me sometimes. It's kind of a cute thought, but do I really want this to be a thing? Taking my seat, I wait. I look at the old-fashioned neon light clock that hangs over the jukebox. Ugh, he's five minutes late! I might as well buy myself a milkshake while I wait. The waitress on tonight's shift is surprised to see me at the diner on my day off. I imagine she'll tell me job loyalty is one thing, but the food here isn't worth writing home about. After serving the stuff for a few months now, I agree with her. But at least the milkshakes are good. You can't really mess up a milkshake. I pull the spoon from the vintage looking ice cream glass and lick it clean. <gasps> So good! A man suddenly rushes in through the diner's front doors. He looks like he ran the whole way here, something tucked carefully in his arm. I immediately recognized his sleeveless hoodie and blue shirt. He quickly scanned the diner in a bit of a panic. He was running late and probably thought that I may have already left. I was one of the few people in the diners, but he didn't seem to see me very quickly. I wave him over. Hey! A smile of relief spreads down his face, and still winded, he hurries down the row of booths and sits across from me. Hi. You're late. I know. I'm so sorry. I had to make a quick stop. I don't know where his voice went. Giving a timid smile, he pulls out a long white box that he was carrying. He places it on the table and slides it over to me. Here, I bought this for you. Thinking about earlier today in the park, it might have been a little creepy to ask you for a date on the spot. I thought I might get you a little something as a way of apologizing. Well, that's sweet. It had better not be a severed ear or fingers or something. Opening the box, I look inside. I see two long stemmed roses with deep red petals. The thorns were removed. They were bound by a shimmering black silk ribbon. They're lovely. Thank you. He smiles as I take the roses out of the box gently, as if the thorns were still on the stems. I draw the aroma in deeply. Oh my goodness. It's no bouquet or anything, but I thought they looked nice. He watches me admire his gift. They're very nice. Thank you. I place the roses gently back in their box. So, um, how'd you know that I work here? Oh, well, I walk by this place rather often in my walks. I... I catch glimpses of you through the window from time to time when you're working. I tried coming in, but I get cold feet and I just keep walking. I'm like a loser. He glares down at the table shamefully. I reach over and give his hand a reassuring pat. No, you're not a loser. Do you know what? I don't even know your name. My name? A smile on his face fades into a slight grimace before a daze grips off to the side. I really, really don't like my name. Honestly, I'd rather be called something else, like a pink name or something. Oof, he must have a really horrible name, like Poop and Pee. Okay, how about... I'm gonna call you Blue Jay, because I saw a Blue Jay at the park before you showed up. He seemed pleased with what I came up with, despite how silly or tacky it might have been. Yeah, that's much better, honestly. Thank you. Wow, I didn't realize until now, but he has some really beautiful blue eyes. The vivid color left me taking the deep blue hue in, and I didn't realize that I was staring until he spoke up. Are we having a moment or what? A blush spreads across his cheeks and he squeezes my hand back. Sorry! I pull my hand from his, cursing myself for staring like that. Oh, now I'm the awkward one. I look away shyly. Hey, hey, there's nothing to be sorry for. He reassures me with a soft smile. He looks around for something to break the tension and his eyes fall upon my milkshake. Hey, I was supposed to buy you something. Well, I mean, you kind of already did in the roses. Man, our first date and you're the one buying. I'm very terrible at this. Well, how about you buy me next time? Oh, I just agreed to a second date. His eyes go wide as he stares at me with surprise. Next time? You want to meet up again? Yeah. You found your voice! His face glows red as I imagined mine had, and he stammers wildly as if all of his thoughts unexpectedly evaporate in an explosion of joy. Still, as much as I'm enjoying his company, regardless of how flattering it's been, I couldn't stay long. I look out the window in a bit of an exaggerated way in order to get his attention. Hey, um, it's getting dark, and I don't like walking home late at night. How about we continue this on our next date? Standing up from my seat, I pull out one of the napkins from the dispenser. I write down my name and number, and smiling, pass the pen and napkin back to him. Here, call me and we'll hang out soon again, okay? Of course! I'd love to see you again. Well, that went well, albeit very strange, but well. I walk to the register, pay for the shake, and with another quick look back at him, I wave and leave the diner. Ah, back in my home sweet home. Once I'm finally back in my apartment, I quietly walk back to my room so I don't disturb my roommate. Judging by the thumping and moaning sounds coming from the other side of the wall, they seem to be having another study session. Oh, I wish they could be more quiet. I have to live here too. I don't bother to turn on the lights in my room and flop heavily in my bed, face first in the mattress, limbs spread wide. Ugh. Despite having so many things on my mind earlier, my thoughts never stray far from Blue Jay. Looking over to the box that was still in my hand, I open it one more time and pull out the bundle of roses, smiling a little. 
and draw on their sweet fragrance again. I hope he calls soon. End of day one. Well, that was your boyfriend. This is a very fun and interesting visual novel. Definitely right up my alley. I like how it's a little bit more dark, a little bit more, I don't know. It kind of has like a Sally face vibe to it in that it's like a little bit more dark. It's a little bit more twisted. And I like that about it. I'm excited to see what happens next. I hope that you enjoyed this playthrough. If you'd like to see me again, make sure you hit push notifications and I will see you on the next one. Bye.